25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. Again, I hope you had a good 4th of July weekend. Some of you taking today off, too. It's, it's, it makes sense, right? The 4th, you have four days off, right? <laughs> now that's that. We're live. <laughs> yeah, we are We are live. Uh, right now here at the Paddock Mall, by the way, if you want to know the temperature, 78 degrees. I think it's the most important thing I say is the temperature every, every single time. Yes. Do you know, we had a, a conversation with... Um, Mrs. Cheney, Dick Cheney's wife. What was her first name again? I should uh, I should know I this. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't remember. I, I just called should it. Should remember. Elizabeth. I think. Elizabeth. Yeah. Was it? Was it? But any, anyway, so I said to her that I think that just as doctors need to pass a test and lawyers need to pass a test, I think any elected official, especially in a federal position, should pass a, a constitution test. And yes. And she very very smartly came back at me with well i think talk show hosts should also pass the same test <laughs> and uh and again i apologize for i just drawing a blank on her first name yeah. but, but but anyway uh and i commented boy i bet you two were tough on on trick-or-treat day i bet you kids came to your door and you don't know who you want to get yeah i don't give candy or something <laughs> Our next guest probably is somebody who would ace a constitutional test. Uh, Ron Edwards has impressed me, and I just found out about him. We were introduced to him from a publicist, actually, yes. and he, he does what we do, except he does it bigger. Yes. <laughs> he does a radio show. It's called <laughs> The Edwards Notebook. He's a journalist. He's the producer and host of his own radio show. It's a syndicated radio show, by the way. Um, he's a news anchor, a contributor to the Detroit News. Headway Magazine, uh, Houston, which I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a magazine. And um, he's on the phone. I want to talk to him about immigration, but it kind of everything. Uh, I went to his website, and he's, he's got some thoughts on a lot of things happening in the news right now. Uh, what's happening in the Middle East, for mm -hmm. example. Yes. Uh, what's happening in the Koreas. Uh, obviously, a guy who was born to do uh, talk radio, and it's an honor to be able to say he's on our show. Ron Edwards. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. It's, a, it's an honor to be here with you guys, and I've heard a lot of great things about you guys and have been uh, just waiting with bated breath to join you guys in conversation this morning. Oh, that's sweet of you to say. Where are you right now? Uh, unfortunately, I'm in the state of Michigan. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, no. Don't let them hear you say that. Why? Why do you say oh. it that way? Well, actually, it's a, it's a beautiful state, uh, and, and weather-wise, it's fantastic this summer because it's been relatively cool and with low humidity, so that's been perfect. But Michigan, because of the status policies over the past decade or so, or actually beyond that since I've been in the state, uh, has really put it in the tank economically. And uh, things are very abysmal as far as uh, economic growth. In fact, uh, uh, Michigan lags way behind states like Ohio and Indiana, which are growing rapidly as far as jobs are concerned, and Wisconsin as well. And, uh, you know, Michigan economically is picking up the rear, and uh, our Republican governor just approved, uh, he fought very heavily for Common Core to be established uh, in the government school system and everything. So we're kind of unhappy with him as well. So, um, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, the Common Core thing. I, I, there's a lot of a lot of it that looks covert. Uh, some some of the, the the math questions that are long form questions. Uh, mm -hmm. They they kind yeah, of it, they kind of have this embedded message in them, don't they? Yeah, they do. And in fact, uh, things are so corrupt that I just you know uh, decided to even take my own son out of uh, government school. He's going to be homeschooled beginning in in the in the fall. It's just gotten to the point of uh, no return. I think everyone needs to just get their children out of there if they can and get them into charter schools, homeschool them, uh, ask God to intervene or, or anything because, uh, you know, the schools were bad enough as it was, but then to add this on this layer on, on right. top, Right. It just guarantees our, our national failure in the future. Have you seen the subtraction example? I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time on the Common Core, but okay. just have you seen the subtraction example? Actually, uh, my, my son tried to do. Show me a, an addition 
example. So really, uh, it, well, the it, subtraction it, example is unbelievable. Yeah. Instead of learning yeah. that twelve minus two equals ten, you do uh, two plus what equals one. I mean, it, it goes through the, a series of things. And then you have to add up all the other numbers, and boom, there's your answer. It's like holy mackerel. Yeah. That's like a yeah. long way to figure out something. Um, yeah. Is Michigan being affected by this whole immigration, illegal immigration thing? We, in fact, there's a rumor has it that uh, about uh, 174 of the lawbreakers are being shipped to our state. And God willing, if I know where it is, and if it's here before I leave out of town for speaking engagements this week, I will be there with with others to protest the situation and, and send them on their way because... Uh, you, what what we have to do as Americans, since our government seems to have turned on us and is doing everything it can to obstruct or harm this nation and including the the allowance of, of these illegal immigrant hordes to just run roughshod over our country. Right, right, right. We have to stand up for ourselves. We have to do it ourselves. It's, we have to do the, the dirty work. And in fact, I, uh, it's brought to my attention that uh, the White House occupier is sending forces to to face off with with, with the good folks in texas who are, who are trying to right this, this, this what do you think is going on I, can i let me tell you my thought my thought is that somewhere along the way we have figured out that while we abolished slavery we still need really cheap labor and that's what they want they want these illegal immigrants to come in here and work for these two dollar an hour wage jobs or whatever it is mm -hmm. and and they say well they're not slaves they're getting paid but come on they can't earn a living and i don't know that i blame the people that i think they're naive about what's happening to them yeah well see that's the the even the amount even if that were just true in unto itself the number of uh illegals needed to cover those positions is minuscule in comparison to the vast numbers that they're allowing to run over our, our nation. Um, so what's going on? All, what do you think is going on? All right, well, what, what's going on, and you may think that, uh, you know, I'm over the edge for saying things like this, but uh, this White House occupier is <laughs> in, cahoots, in cahoots with forces or people that uh, do not have our nation's best interest at heart. This man is not in favor of sealing our borders. He does not believe in the greatness, uh, the exceptional nature of the United States. And he will use any uh, method at his, at his disposal to um, basically overrun our way of life. And if that includes keeping our borders open and having it flooded with um, a mixture of uh, barbarians, terrorists, lawbreakers, diseased folks, uh, to the tune of millions, and, and there are many millions of them, them in our country. Uh, he's going to continue to try to usurp our right of self-protection. He, he wanted to uh, overturn our religious rights. Um, for example, the cake baker you know about in, in I think it was it in Wisconsin. Um, they're going after him, or they went after him. Right, because, right, right, uh, right. They wanted to carry out, but yet, here's the funny thing about it. Uh, not too long before that, that, that case broke out, there was another case where uh, a, a blind man called a cab company. And this is in, in Minnesota. And he called. He says, I need a taxi. I'm blind. And the, the gentleman asked over the phone. He says, uh, well, let me ask you, do you have a dog? Or you have a, a seeing eye dog. And the guy says, yes, I do. And so the guy, the, um, the taxi company says, well, I'm sorry, I cannot pick you up. We're Muslims, and we don't believe in uh, dogs in our, in our taxi. That's against our religion. We hate the dogs. So the guy took them to court, and guess what? The court ruled on, on the side of, of the Muslims, uh, saying that they were exercising their religious rights. Oh, really? Oh, my. But it's oh, yeah. exactly the Absolutely. opposite of the cake guy in Wisconsin. Yes, exactly, because there's, a t see, there's an attack against anything that is affiliated with the greatness of America. And uh, a lot of the deniers love to say that 
Christianity was not a part of the the founding of this this country. Right, and all right. they have to do is read right. uh, the, the the words of the founding fathers, and and Christianity was its its principles. I mean, Thomas Jefferson, all the guys, Benjamin Rush. There are many uh, quotes to that effect. Sure, sure, yeah. And these dis- these modern day discriminators, who for whatever reason have have you know they're on the muscle against Christianity, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Uh, they, there is no teaching of the Federalist Papers to our young, and uh, you know, and of course, Christian principles. That's up. You know, that's got to go too because yeah. they want to. Tra- as they want to, as Obama said. Uh, oh gosh, forget his quote. He's so forgettable. Uh, that he was going to transform <laughs> America or something to that effect. Um, Mm-hmm. Change. change it or right. change, yeah, change yeah, right. Right. Yeah. and and, the, and change and and he's and but the irony of it is uh, as far as the illegal immigration is this month he and his wife are promoting family they're promoting family values and all of these spreads in the uh, uh, printed media but yet he's encouraging people from all over the world to just disassociate their children with family and have them come here on their own yeah yeah so yeah, he's 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 the the most dangerous president in our nation's history, and uh, you know if I ever meet Jimmy Carter, I will have to apologize to him because I used to say that he was our worst president <laughs> in our history. <laughs> That's a and, backhanded uh, compliment, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'd have to also resurrect Woodrow Wilson and and and, and apologize to him as well. Oh my goodness! For what he for what he opened up. Uh, well, you to. you you speak like a talk show host. Well, I thank you. That's, I take that as a compliment. Yeah, of course. Well, that's what we do. I mean, we do we do the yeah. same thing. Well, we, we, we I actually don't. I, I actually host a um, a commentary. Um, it was uh, back to Detroit News a few years. Compared it favorably with my radio idol Paul Harvey, and um, I just you know I, that that really sent me over the moon for about ten seconds. Um, be compared favorably with Paul Harvey, the best who ever of course, lived. Of course, yeah, yeah. Commentaries, yeah, no question about uh, it. Was something, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I've done talk shows and, and that of the like. And uh, are your are your main, are your commentaries I'm, online? And can we hear them online? Yes, and in fact, if you go to my website, they're also posted there on on the left side. There, there's a, a list of them. They're archived, and you can punch them right up. I do. Uh, I'm on your website right there. Do you have a yeah, book too? Is, so, is you have a book called The New Voice of America, or is that just another feed? The seven, the seven pillars of society. That I, I'm in fact in the process of writing that book, and prayerfully it will be out by September. Okay. Uh, but that that's what, what's being worked on the re, the, the, re, rebuilding the seven pillars of society. The the story and, and the, you've got the phones ringing, so I want to make sure we get some calls in here. But real quickly, I wanted to read sure. read to you uh, regarding the immigration news. Dozens of sheriffs around the country are refusing to detain non-citizens convicted of crimes for extra time to allow the federal government to start deportation proceedings after a court ruling that one immigrant's civil rights had been violated when she was held without probable cause. It's pretty interesting. When a judge says something is in violation of the Fourth Amendment, I am not going to just keep doing it, said Sheriff William Gore of San Diego. He was uh, being interviewed by the New York Times. Wow. So, and, and you think some of these illegal immigrants that we're hearing about, and are we talking about the children that we've been hearing about? Are they coming to Detroit? I, I, I don't know if they're children or, or adults or, or all, you know, just a mixture. I, all I know is that I've been told uh, by an activist here that they're, they're sending, I guess, I know it's fewer than 200 uh, to Michigan. They didn't say Detroit specifically, but I that you. would probably, that would be the ideal place. Because uh, Detroit's already a hellhole, and uh, they'd fit right in. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, so you know, coming from one hellhole to another. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised because I think Detroit is also a sanctuary city where everything illegal goes mm-hmm. uh, if it goes against our country. So that they're in support of it. So what happened to it? It was, used to be such a beautiful. I mean, it used yeah. to be cars and Motown. I mean, no oh, longer. Yeah. Well. No longer, because what is what happened is that uh, in 1962, the the thing started was was unplugged when they elected their first Democrat Party administration, and from 62 to 67, enough mayhem was created that they had the largest urban riot in American history in 1967, and it's been vastly downhill ever since. If you were to ever come here, 
and see Detroit, and I would tell you, without a doubt, that that is where the White House occupier wants to take our country. He wants to take her down. He doesn't like the place. And I am very, very embarrassed as an American that there are millions and millions of Americans who agree with this philosophy. And you have the idiots who run around and say, well, if you speak against his policies, you are racist. And then you have the white liberals who elected him because they're just fellow socialist pigs themselves. And uh, it amazes me. It, how, well, you know, but, but, but in defense of that... Uh, oh. I mean, I know I know so many white people who are pro Obama, and I know so many black people who are against him. So it's kind of it's fifty fifty between the races. It seems like I mean half of half. Well, it, well, maybe where you're at, but where I'm at here and here in the former motor capital of the world, right? <laughs> uh, you know, if you, if you well, I, I don't live in the city, but if you go in there, ninety five percent or more agree with uh, Obama and. They understand because we talk about it every week as I am involved with a talk show that runs on Saturdays. And we talk about it. We've been talking about it for, for a decade, uh, the destructive policies. And I've come to the conclusion, and I've, I've, I've said on the air they must agree with this destructive philosophy because if they didn't agree with it, they would have changed it by now. Mm. Like they change their fashions every year, like they change their mates every year, and everything else they change with, at the drop of a hat, yeah. um, including their taste in music. But hey, they stick. They stick like glue with that philosophy that is destructive. Uh, Ron Edwards is our guest, and he does a talk show, um, a syndicated talk show, or or is it a, what we call it a commentary program? Uh, the Edwards Notebook, and his website is the Ron Edwards dot com. Um, and you have some phone calls coming in, so let's take a few of these. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air with Ron Edwards. Uh, good morning, Mr. Edwards. Uh, this morning, administration sir. in the past three administrations are all part of the largest, most dangerous anti-American government in the world. And it doesn't matter whether there's an R or a D in front of their names. The American people have to wake up uh, like we did in the 60s when we marched for civil rights and like we did in the 70s when we marched against the war in Vietnam. We have to march again on Washington to take back our country okay. and as far as I'm concerned uh, they knew about this last January last January the administration put uh, out the uh, job uh, quotas for people who could drive uh, mini buses or vans and could care for small children like mm -hmm. they knew this was mm, coming yeah. thank you yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Good. For, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the I'd like, call. I'd like to. Res I, I'd like to respond to something that he said. Huh. Um, well, I agree with much of what he said. I, I, I wanted to talk with him a little bit. I, I take issue with him equating the George W. Bush administration with the Obama administration. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. While George W. was not perfect, he was not an individual and is not an individual that hates America. He's not an out-and-out -out communist. The man, when he, when he left office, uh, uh, gasoline was less than $2 a gallon. Uh, the unemployment rate was below uh, 8%. I believe it was 7% or something like that. And things were beginning to go downhill uh, a bit under his administration in 2007 when the Democrats took control of Congress. And people have to learn to discriminate the crucial differences and while there were things that George W. did that I disagreed with, like the first big bailout and things of that nature that opened the door for the mammoth bailouts of the Obama administration, uh, there is a clear and present danger, I mean, uh, difference between uh, the Bush administration and uh, the White House occupier. Okay. And uh, please. Ron, let me, let me take another phone call. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air with Ron Edwards. Hey, how y'all doing this morning? Good. Great, great. You know, I, I hear all the pundits talk every day about, you know, we want to take our country back, take it back from who? Once, you know, we uh, uh, come into this melting part of America. Man, we all Americans. And people just won't, you know, come to the truth about, hey, Things are changing. It doesn't matter who in the White House, Republican, Democrat, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter who uh, 
is in the White House. This country has lost its morals so long ago when they took prayer out of school, they put guns in school, and, you know, I hear people talk every day about, well, you know, the president needs to do this, uh, this Congress needs to do that, that uh, you know. And, you know, and it dawned on me one day, hey, for all those that pundits that talk about how bad the country is and we need change, why don't they try running for office and see how they can change America? And then they will see and say, well, hey, you know, this thing is harder than I thought it was. Okay, Ron, you want to respond to that? Yeah. Well, he makes a few good points. Uh, they are t- they, when America took prayer out of the schools, uh, that, that did uh, uh, produce an immediate harm. Uh, anytime you take God out of anything, you do open the door to uh, clear and present dangers. And uh, you are correct, sir, that the, the nation is changing, and it's not changing for the better. But I do say this, that there are many good people that run for office, and in fact, one in the great state of Florida who ran for office was in office, and because I guess maybe they thought he was too good or something, they redistricted him, and uh, he lost his, his, his second bid for Congress. That man's name is Alan West. So good people do run for office in this country, and in many cases, uh, the, the establishment uh, does not favor uh, true patriots. Uh, why I don't understand that. I'd have to, you know, you have to ask them personally, and you know, if they tell you the truth. But uh, so good people do run, sir, and, and sometimes it's more difficult because they don't have the money backing of the party heads or or, or other political uh, reasons. Now, now talk about a little bit about the leadership of the president with Obama and the uh, the deadlock that we always hear about that that nobody can uh, nobody's willing to compromise nobody's willing to budge. Talk about that a little bit. What did you say that they said that uh, who said that no one is willing to compromise? I just want to. The president. The president. The president said oh. that Congress isn't willing to. Uh, to okay. buy, I, he I, I said, I'm going to do things on my own. You're not going to do it with me, so I'm going to do it on my own. I, I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly, because first of all, that is another one of his big fat lies. The only people, uh, since I've been paying attention to political uh, life in this country, the only people that have been compromising have been those on the right. The Republicans have always been the party of compromise. And um, the left has never compromised. I remember the man they used to call the lion of the Senate, uh, Kennedy, Ted Kennedy. Right. So even back in those days, those guys never compromised. The only time they compromised, there was one point of compromise when the left did compromise, I'm sorry, it was during the Clinton administration and under the leadership of Newt Gingrich, they got Clinton and the boys to uh, okay some good things for the country. So they did a comprom- they did compromise once, but for the most part, the side that compromises is usually the Republicans, and that's to the detriment of our country. When um, can anyone point to me that, that this White House occupier has compromised on anything? Now, if you don't agree with them, see, this is the thing, and he uses this to to, to the hilt because he knows that everyone is afraid that they'll be called a racist or an Uncle Tom or something silly like that. If they dare to say, you know what, uh, Mr. White House occupier, if you <laughs> would please uh, compromise yourself and, 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 and stand up and work to protect the con- according to the Constitution of the United States and work to the best interest of our country, and why don't you compromise, sir? and help us seal our border, and then talk about the illegal immigrants that are running around dis- disrespecting not only the people of America, but even the land of America, which the environmentalist wackos are so concerned about all oh, the dog on time. But last time I was in Arizona, they took me down to the border, and all of the filth and the squalor and, 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 and everything that, that I saw in mass of these Ill- illegal immigrants do to our country when they come over, it blew my mind. It made a landfill, an average landfill, look good. Mm. So, Ron, uh, Ron, we've only got like a minute and twenty seconds. I'm going to uh, squeeze in a phone call. I'm, I'm taking a risk here doing this because I know sometimes people are long. Good morning. I appreciate you calling, uh, and uh, but we've yeah. got very little time. Go ahead. Yes, I just want to ask Ron about 
you know, when when he said that people are called, you know, racist and everything, you know, I'm mm-hmm. from the South, and uh, I grew up in the South. I'm almost 60 years old. It's mm-hmm. like, just like a drunk. You know a drunk when you see a drunk. Everybody ain't racist, but I know racism when I see r- racism, when I right. hear racism, you know, and I'm not okay. racist because I got, like I say, I got... Um, uh, mixed grandkids and stuff and mixed daughter-in-law. So, but I'm just saying, it's like people need to just stop behind behind that, you know, that so-called uh, I'm not a racist and stuff and and just say, hey, look, you know, this is the way I feel. I don't like this person. I don't like that person. Right. We're, you know, it's about we, we're up against the clock, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I, I, right. let me, thank you for calling, and uh, and Ron, thank you for being on the air. I can see why you thank are you. so popular uh, in in what you're doing. The website for Ron Edwards is the ronedwards.com and that's the best advice I can give you if you want to hear more. We'll have to have you back, Ron. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you. It's been a, been an honor. That was me. great. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. New rules for overseas air travelers bound for the USA. Homeland Security officials are concerned terrorists could use electronic devices to bring down airplanes. So Secretary Jay Johnson told NBC's Meet the Press. I directed that we step up our aviation security at last point, at some last point of departure airports coming into the United States. That means if you're traveling overseas, make sure your devices are turned on. Fox News Radio's Rachel Sutherland devices that can't be turned on could be confiscated. Dozens of women and girls kidnapped in Nigeria have escaped their captors. Some 60 girls and women are free in northeastern Nigeria after being kidnapped some two weeks ago by the Boko Haram group. They apparently ran away while the Islamic militants were fighting. Fox's Greg Palcott, hundreds of females kidnapped in April have still not been found. State-sanctioned merchants in Washington are given the green light. They can start selling legal pot beginning tomorrow. Fox News, we report, you decide. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. On March 3rd last year, Henry W. faced his own death with incredible courage. He wasn't in an accident. He wasn't ill. He wasn't in any danger. But he faced this reality head on. If he died, his wife and children wouldn't be able to pay the mortgage, make the car payments, or keep up the life they'd had. His family would lose everything. So he picked up the phone and called.